Hello YouTube. It has been quite a while. I keep making all these awful promises and I decided I'm no longer going to promise to you guys when I'm going to post a video. But it's been asked of me that I go over the functionality of a TS2 Type 2 signal cabinet. So here we go. First, I'm going to just say um, the power that is provided to the signal cabinet comes in here through the power panel or the service panel. We have some breakers here that um, are connected to several different circuits in the cabinet including the equipment, the master control breaker, and then this is auxiliary power. I would venture to say that the lighting is attached to this one so let's test that theory. Yep. Okay. Uh, we have some surge and line protection devices in line here, um, as well as this is the solid state relay. This is replaced um, mercury contactor switch, which is in older signal cabinets. And then down here you have um, a few ground buses, including a neutral bus that is just tied directly to the service neutral. The power then in turn comes from all of these guys and basically is wired into the back panel here this uh, terminal strip here there's quite a bit of um, different uh, power connections there and the power pretty much uh, is distributed in different ways throughout the cabinet one of the first things you're always going to notice about a TS2 type 2 is that just like TS2 type 1 we have a bus interface cable on the detector racks the signal controller as well as the MMU but you don't have them down here in the load bay and the reason why is that unlike a TS2 type 1 a TS2 type 2 operates a little bit more like a TS1 in the sense that the inputs and outputs of the controller are once again over the A, B and C cables driving the 24 volt uh, outputs from the controller to the inputs of the load switch which in turn drives the 120 volt output of the load switch into the field wiring okay so once again 24 volt DC and logic ground whoosh, control these guys which in turn whoosh, drives the power out to the field indications which then make the lights do the thing See, they do the thing. Okay, so that being said, down below here, we have a flasher assembly. Okay, so we have, hold on, these guys are jumping in my way here, but right here we have a NEMA flasher, and this circuit is being driven from outputs that are on the back panel. They're wired in back here, driving this guy constantly. So you basically have a similar output like a load switch, except this is 120 volts switching back and forth all day long, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, just sitting there waiting for these guys to switch. Okay, so now these are what's called flash transfer relays. And if you take a look here, really close I got nice and close on the flash transfer relays um, if you can see that right now they're in contact with this side of the relay on the top part there's a middle part here that if it switches down here it's actually going to switch the circuit from these load switches that are driving the field indications if it switches down here it's going to be running on this guy and this guy is wired to these flash program terminals, which in turn passes the output onto the reds here because this cabinet is configured to flash all red. Now, if I were to change the input here for the yellow to be here where the red is on this cabinet, then the yellows would flash and not the reds. That's, that's all that is, basically, is mapping. So some, some, uh, some places will allow for one 
direction to flash yellow while the other direction flashes red. Anyway, what I'm going to do is show you how flash operation works. Okay, so you see right now we're just cycling like normal. I've got this switch here. This is my tech flash switch. Now, I'm going to get down here so you can see these relays, what they're doing. And I am reaching up and grabbing that switch. Did you see that? Let's see if I can move to the side. See, now it's pressing on the bottom. And so we've got the flasher doing its thing and it is providing flash operation to the field. So when you see a signal that's in flash, this is what's going on. You are on the flash side of these flash relays. And the flash transfer relay operation, and that's how that works. Anyway, now I'm gonna move it to the side again. I'm gonna go back into normal cycling. Look at that. Now, we're back in full operation. Now, uh, for questions about how the bus interface operates, there are all sorts of um, uh, frame information basically going across the serial network. Um, most of the thinky part of all of that is here in the controller. However, some functions are built into this conflict monitor to allow for even more protection. So like an MMU is capable of um, not just detecting whether or not there are conflicts in between phases in the field, but they're also designed so that you can program very specific phases that you want it to actually look at for red fails and dual indication versus other phases you might not want to look at that so like if I have a flashing yellow arrow you you have a special kind of programming that goes into this guy a lot more functionality another thing that this bus allows this to do is that this controller can actually see real-time what this guy is thinking. Whereas in some of the older cabinets, the TS1 cabinets, this thing just does what it does based upon the voltage that's here, but it, it did not do anything based upon what the controller actually was seeing. And so now there's communication between the two. On a TS2 cabinet, just like a TS1, the detector inputs are still running through the bus interface back over here to the controller. So um, you see on the left here, we have our detector panels. This is where um, your PED push button wires go, as well as your uh, field detection, like your loops, inductive loops go in here, or even uh, video detection sometimes will go in here. And then down here, we have our inputs, inputs for our preemption system. And this is a, um, this is a preemption receiver, an Opticom. Um, I have it set up for testing here. But up here on the left, we have the phase selector. So when the Opticom receives a call through this wire, it comes up here through this harness, and then it goes to this guy. This guy then in turn actually sends a signal uh, through the back panel. It's actually not the back panel, but the harness down here, and then it runs into this D cable as an input for the controller. So as far as I can tell, that's most of the functionality of a TS2 Type 2 signal cabinet. Now I'm sure you guys are going to have some questions, so please, please, please just ask, but then also be patient because, um, like, you know, I'm sure you know that it takes me a while to find that you guys have been reaching out to me. Um, I'm going to show this guy really quick. Um, these are detector input testers. It just allows for me to place a call here. Um, same thing with the pedestrian test. In fact, if I wanted to place a ped call on phase two, I could just press a button and there it is, it's locked. So then the next time that phase two rolls around, it will uh, serve that deal. 
I can do the same thing with preemption. This here is stop time. It allows me to actually stop the signal real time. So let's do this. Let's, let's wait here. It looks like we're counting down. It's gapped out and now it's red. There we go. Okay. See that? I just flipped it in stop time in all red. And so now this is how I make drivers really angry. Everybody's red. Everybody's just sitting here waiting. And, and usually it takes a little while before somebody realizes nobody's going. And they, they just don't know why. But anyway, <laughs> this is actually a very safe way for me to come in and out of flash. Because if I decide that I want everybody to stop before it goes into flash, then I can do that. Or when I come out of flash, I'll be in all red. Okay, and then I know that I can take it out of stop time and then cycle to the next phase. Anyway, the back of the door here, here's the police panel flash. This here allows for law enforcement and or traffic control to flip between flash and then cycling. Um, it does it a little bit differently. In fact, what it does is it runs the initial on the signal controller um, which would be basically the safer way to come out of flash. So, and then this here, this is a little alarm button that basically when the door is open, it can tell uh, the controller that the door is open. And if we have network uh, connectivity to the signal controller down from downtown, we can actually see that the, the uh, police panel door is open. So sometimes that comes in handy when we see that the signal is in flash, the police panel door is open, then we know that law enforcement is likely in there and they flip the switch, or perhaps it got left open, who knows. So anyway, hopefully uh, this has been a helpful video. Um, uh, I plan on going more in depth on individual parts of how the signal cabinet operates. Um, I hope I didn't give anybody any um, motion sickness with that. Uh, please click like and su subscribe, all of that stuff. Um, notifications, the little bell. Um, you know, and just uh, stay in touch. Be good to y'all, each other's. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.